This is chapter 13, Direct and Inverse Proportions. From page number 201 to page number 215. Let's listen to chapter 13, Direct and Inverse Proportions. Page number 201. 13.1 Introduction Mohan prepares tea for himself and his sister. He uses 300 ml of water, 2 spoons of sugar, 1 spoon of tea leaves and 50 ml of milk. How much quantity of each item will he need if he has to make tea for 5 persons? If two students take 20 minutes to arrange chairs for an assembly, then how much time would 5 students take to do the same job. We come across many such situations in our day-to-day -day life where we need to see variation in one quantity bringing in variation in the other quantity. For example, 1. If the number of articles purchased increases, the total cost also increases. 2. More the money deposited in a bank, more is the interest earned. 3. As the speed of a vehicle increases, the time taken to cover the same distance decreases. 4. For a given job, more the number of workers, less will be the time taken to complete the work. Observe that change in one quantity leads to change in the other quantity. Write 5 more such situations where change in one quantity leads to change in another quantity. How do we find out the quantity of each item needed by Mohan? Or the time five students take to complete the job? To answer such questions, we now study some concepts of variation. 13.2 If the cost of 1 kg of sugar is rupees 36, then what would be the cost of 3 kg sugar? It is rupees 108. Page number 202. Similarly, we can find the cost of 5 kg or 8 kg of sugar. Study the following table. Here, we have a table with two rows. In the first row, we have weight of sugar in kg. In the second row, we have cost in rupees. 1 kg, 36 rupees. 3 kg, 108 rupees, 5 kg, 180 rupees, 6 kg, blank, 8 kg, blank, 10 kg, blank. For 3, we have both the quantities into 3. For 5, we have multiplied both the quantities into 5. For 6, multiplied by 6. For 8, multiplied by 8. And for 10, multiplied by 10. Observe that as weight of sugar increases, cost also increases in such a manner that their ratio remains constant. Take one more example. Suppose a car uses 4 litre of petrol to travel a distance of 60 kilometers. How far will it travel using 12 litres? The answer is 180 kilometers. How did we calculate it? Since Petrol consumed in the second instance is 12 litres, that is, 3 times of 4 litres, the distance travelled will also be 3 times of 60 km. In other words, when the petrol consumption becomes threefold, the distance travelled is also threefold the previous one. Let the consumption of petrol be x litres and the corresponding distance travelled be y km. Now, Complete the following table. Here, we have a table with two rows. In the first row, we have petrol in litres, represented by x. Second row has distance in kilometre, represented by y. 4 litres, 60 kilometre. 8 litres, blank. 12 litres, 180 kilometre. 15 litres, blank. 20 litres, blank, 25 litres, blank. We find that as the value of x increases, 
value of y also increases in such a way that the ratio x by y does not change. It remains constant, say k. In this case, it is 1 by 15. Check it. We say that x and y are in direct proportion. If x by y is equal to k or x is equal to ky. In this example, 4 by 60 is equal to 12 by 180, where 4 and 12 are the quantities of petrol consumed in litres or x, and 60 and 80 are the distances or y in kilometre. So when x and y are in direct proportion, we can write x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2, y1, y2 are values of y corresponding to the values x1, x2 of x respectively. The consumption of petrol and the distance travelled by a car is a case of direct proportion. Similarly, the total amount spent and the number of articles purchased is also an example of direct proportion. Page number 203 Think of a few more examples for direct proportion. Check whether Mohan, in the initial example, will take 750 ml of water, 5 spoons of sugar, 2.5 spoons of tea leaves and 125 ml of milk to prepare tea for 5 persons. Let us try to understand further the concept of direct proportion through the following activities. Do this. 1. Take a clock and fix its minute's hand at 12. Record the angle turned through by the minute hand from its original position and the time that has passed in the following table. Here, we have a table with three rows. In the first row, we have time passed or t in minutes. In second row, we have angle turned or a in degree. In the third row, we have t by a. T1 15, A1 90, T by A blank, T2 30, A2 blank, T by A blank, T3 45, A3 blank, T by A blank, T4 60, A4 blank, T by A blank. What do you observe about T and A? Do they increase together? Is T by A same every time. Is the angle turned through by the minute hand directly proportional to the time that has passed? Yes. From the above table, you can also observe T1 is to T2 is equal to A1 is to A2 because T1 is to T2 is equal to 15 is to 30 is equal to 1 is to 2. A1 is to A2 is equal to 90 is to 180 is equal to 1 is to 2. Check if T2 is to T3 is equal to A2 is to A3 and T3 is to T4 is equal to A3 is to A4. You can repeat this activity by choosing your own time interval. 2. Ask your friend to fill the following table and find the ratio of his age to the corresponding age of his mother. Here. We have a table with three rows and three columns. Column 1 is age 5 years ago. Column 2 is present age. Column 3 is age after 5 years. Row 1 is friend's age or F. Row 2 is mother's age or M. Row 3 is F by M. Fill in the blanks. What do you observe? Do F and M increase or decrease together? Is F by M same every time? No. You can repeat this activity with other friends and write down your observations. Page number 204. Thus, variables increasing or decreasing together need not always be in direct proportion. For example, 1. Physical changes in human beings occur with time, but not necessarily in a predetermined ratio. 2. Changes in weight and height among individuals are not in any proportion and 3. There is no direct relationship or ratio between the height of a tree 
and the number of leaves growing on its branches. Think of some more similar examples. Try these. 1. Observe the following tables and find if x and y are directly proportional. 1. Here we have a table with two rows, x and y. The values in the first row are 20, 17, 14, 11, 8, 5, 2. Values in second row are 40, 34, 28, 22, 16, 10, 4. 2. Again, we have a similar table. The values in first row are 6, 10, 14, 18, 22, 26, 30. The values in second row are 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. 3. Again, we have a similar table. The values in the first row are 5, 8, 12, 15, 18, 20. The values in the second row are 15, 24, 36, 60, 72, 100. 2. Principal is equal to rupees 1000. Rate is equal to 8% per annum. Fill in the following table and find which type of interest, simple or compound, changes in direct proportion with time period. Here, we have a table which represents time period in three columns, one year, two years, three years. And then there are two rows, simple interest in rupees and the second row is compound interest in rupees. The formula for simple interest is P into R into T by 100. The formula for compound interest is P, bracket open, 1 plus R by 100, bracket closed, raised to the power T, minus P. Fill in the blanks. Think, discuss and write. If we fix time period and the rate of interest, simple interest changes proportionally with principal. Would there be a similar relationship for compound interest? Why? Let us consider some solved examples where we would use the concept of direct proportion. Example 1. The cost of 5 meters of a particular quality of cloth is rupees 210. Tabulate the cost of 2, 4, 10 and 13 meters of cloth of the same type. Solution. Suppose the length of cloth is x meters and its cost in rupees is y. Then we have a table here in which first row has values for x and second row has values for y. The values in row 1 are 2, 4, 5, 10, 13. The values in row 2 are y2, y3, 210, y4, y5. Page number 205 As the length of cloth increases, cost of the cloth also increases in the same ratio. It is a case of direct proportion. We make use of the relation of type x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2. 1. Here x1 is equal to 5, y1 is equal to 210 and x2 is equal to 2. Therefore x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2 gives 5 by 210 is equal to 2 by y2 or 5 by 2 is equal to 2 into 210 or y2 is equal to 2 into 210 divided by 5 is equal to 84. 2. If x3 is equal to 4, then 5 by 210 is equal to 4 by y3 or 5 by 3 is equal to 4 into 210 or y3 is equal to 4 into 210 by 5 is equal to 168. Can we use x2 by y2 is equal to x3 by y3 here? Try. 3. If x4 is equal to 10, then 5 by 210 
is equal to 10 by y4 or y4 is equal to 10 into 210 by 5 is equal to 420. 4. If x5 is equal to 13, then 5 by 210 is equal to 13 by y5 or y5 is equal to 13 into 210 by 5 is equal to 546. Note that here we can also use 2 by 84 or 4 by 168 or 10 by 420 in the place of 5 by 200. Example 2. An electric pole 14 meters high casts a shadow of 10 meters. Find the height of a tree that casts a shadow of 15 meters under similar conditions. Solution. Let the height of the tree be x meters. We form a table as given below. Here we have a table with two rows. In the first row we have height of the object in meters. The values are 14 and x. In the second row we have length of the shadow in meters. The values are 10 and 15. Note that more the height of an object, the more would be the length of its shadow. Hence, this is a case of direct proportion, that is, x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2. We have 14 by 10 is equal to x by 15, y, or 14 by 10 into 15 is equal to x, or 14 into 3 by 2 is equal to x, so 21 is equal to x. Thus, height of the tree is 21 meters. Alternately, we can write, x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2 as x1 by x2 is equal to y1 by y2. Page number 206. So, x1 is 2x2 is equal to y1 is 2y2 or 14 is 2x is equal to 10 is to 15. Therefore, 10 into x is equal to 15 into 14 or x is equal to 15 into 14 by 10 is equal to 21. Example 3. If the weight of 12 sheets of thick paper is 40 grams, how many sheets of the same paper would weigh 2 and a half kilograms? Solution. Let the number of sheets which weigh 2 and a half kg be x. We put the above information in the form of a table as given below. Here, we have a table with two rows. In the first row, we have number of sheets and the values are 12 and x. In the second row, we have weight of sheets in grams. The values are 40 and 2500. More the number of sheets, the more would their weight be. So the number of sheets and their weights are directly proportional to each other. So 12 by 40 is equal to x by 2500 or 12 into 2500 by 40 is equal to x or 750 is equal to x. Thus, the required number of sheets of paper is equal to 750. In the above table, you can also observe that 1 kilogram is equal to 1000 grams. So, 2.5 kilograms is equal to 2500 grams. Alternate method Two quantities x and y which vary in direct proportion have the relation x is equal to ky or x by y is equal to k. Here, k is equal to number of sheets by weight of sheets in grams is equal to 12 by 40 is equal to 3 by 10. Now, x is the number of sheets of the paper which weigh 2.5 kg or 2500 gram. Using the relation x equal to ky, x equal to 3 by 10 into 2500 is equal to 750. Thus, 750 sheets of paper would weigh 2 and a half kg. Example 4. A train is moving at a uniform speed of 75 km per hour. 1. How far will it travel in 20 minutes? 2. Find the time required to cover a distance of 250 km. Solution. Let the distance travelled in kilometer in 20 minutes be x 
and time taken in minutes to cover 250 km by. 1 hour is equal to 60 minutes. Here, we have a table. In the first row, we have distance travelled in kilometer and the values are 75 x 250. In the second row, we have time taken in minutes and the values are 60 20 y. Page number 207. Since the speed is uniform, therefore, the distance covered would be directly proportional to time. 1. We have 75 by 60 is equal to x by 20 or 75 by 60 into 20 is equal to x or x is equal to 25. So the train will cover a distance of 25 km in 20 minutes. 2. Also, 75 by 60 is equal to 250 by y or y is equal to 250 into 60 by 75 is equal to 200 meters or 3 hours 20 minutes. Therefore, 3 hours 20 minutes will be required to cover a distance of 250 kilometers. Alternatively, when x is known, then one can determine y from the relation x by 20 is equal to 250 by y. You know that a map is a miniature representation of a very large region. A scale is usually given at the bottom of the map. The scale shows a relationship between actual length and the length represented on the map. The scale of the map is thus the ratio of distance between two points on the map and the actual distance between two points on the large region. For example, if one centimeter on the map represents eight kilometer of actual distance, that is, the scale is 1 cm is to 8 km or 1 is to 8 lakh, then 2 cm of the same map will represent 16 km. Hence, we can say that scale of a map is based on the concept of direct proportion. Example 5. The scale of a map is given as 1 is to 3 crore. Two cities are 4 cm apart on the map. Find the actual distance between them. Solution Let the map distance be x centimeter and actual distance be y centimeter. Then 1 is to 3 crore is equal to x is to y or 1 by 3 into 10 raised to the power 7 is equal to x by y. Since x is equal to 4, so 1 by 3 into 10 raised to the power 7 is equal to 4 by y or y is equal to 4 into 3 into 10 raised to the power 7 is equal to 12 into 10 raised to the power 7 centimeter is equal to 1200 kilometer. Thus, two cities which are 4 centimeter apart on the map are actually 1200 kilometer away from each other. Here we have an example of a political map. On this map, the scale is 1 cm is equal to 300 km. Do this. Take a map of your state. Note the scale used there. Using a ruler, measure the map distance between any two cities. Calculate the actual distance between them. You were just listening to the audiobook Mathematics for Class 8. Program Coordinator Dr. Rajesh Kumar Nimesh Narrator Akash Ahuja Technical Coordinator Batilang Lingdo Sound Recordist Vikas Sangwan Assistance in Production Ruchi Sharma Directed and Produced by Vimlesh Chaudhary And this program is presented to you by CIET NCERT New Delhi India